Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a procedural wooden ceiling or floor using Bifrost. I'll also be sharing a procedural approach to texturing with more control. So let's start in Bifrost, we'll be using Val Allen's compounds for this, it's free and I'll leave a link below. More specifically, we are going to use the Quick Read compound, and huge credit for him for helping me with this setup, I am just recreating it. So with the Quick Read we get a bunch of points that we can use to instance geometry for example. Now we create a wood board to instance on the points. Now playing with the, these simple settings we can distribute the boards as we like and make them closer to each other. Now as you can see this is just too uniform and although there are wooden ceilings and floors like this, I wanted a more chaotic distribution with random offsets for each row. So let's just have a single row and we can iterate over to create as many as we like but with random offsets. We will need to set the point size in a set geo property so we get no issues later when we are baking the instances. Create a for each and connect the geometry to a new port. Now inside the loop we need to offset the rows in the Z to create a bunch of them and also in the X to give it some random distribution. So we need to add the point position to a value node connecting the current index to the Z. This way we'll be able to offset the rows by one. For the random offset between the boards, we're going to use a random value between two numbers and connect the index to the seed so we get a random number each time. Now we just need to set the point position. And back to the main graph, we need to merge the geometry and connect it to the create instances. And now we have the result we're after. And remember, everything so far is procedural, we can change the number of ports per row and the number of rows itself. Now we can do some minor tweaks like adding a slight random rotation and maybe dragging all the instances to the center after baking the instances. Ok, let's have a look at the procedural texture distribution setup. So after converting the graph to a Maya mesh, I did just a quick boolean to cut the shape as I wanted. Now I need to randomly assign a color to each board that I can later remap and use in a switch setup to mix different textures. And for that I have a work in progress script that does exactly that. These colors are not so random, they are there for a reason. Each of them have values in a JSV color that can be easily remapped with a range node. So let's see how that works in context. To explain it more easily, I will create a few flat colors and connect them to a switch node. Now we need somehow to connect the random vertex colors to the index of the switch. For that we start by loading the color set, then in a range node we can specify how many variations we want in the output max. Converting the RGB values to float and subtracting 1 because the index is 0 based. Finally convert it to an int value and connect it to the index of the switch node. Now rendering we do have the different colors distributed by the boards and we can always add more variation if needed. Finally we can add the textures instead of the debugging colors. Hopefully you can see the potential in this texturing workflow and learn something new from this video. Again huge thanks to Val Allen for the help in the Bifrost and don't forget to download these compounds. Thank you and see you next time, bye bye.